an RC circuit. We have a capacitor, we have a resistor, we have a switch, and a battery. <coughs> we close the switch. At T is equal to zero. Our goal is to figure out the current as a function of time through the resistor and the charge as a function of time on the capacitor. We are clearly charging a capacitor. Let's start with limits. At time t equals zero, what do we know about the charge on the capacitor and the current through the resistor? Doorstep. You are correct. It is either at max or at zero. <laughs> Which one is it, Mr. P? Zero. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it would be best on the AP test and on my final exam if we refrain from guessing. I'm just going to throw that out there. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> but in the long run, it is best not to guess. It's better to have studied and know. We know the, the charge on the capacitor is zero. What's going to happen to the charge as a function of time, Sierra? It's going to increase until it gets, it gets to its maximum. It's going to, going to get to its maximum at what time, Sarah Jane Jones? Infinity. Infinity. Good. What is the initial, what do we know about the initial current on through the resistor, Phil? It's at its max. It's at its max. And what happens to the current as a function of time, Tyler? It's going to decrease until it gets to zero. What then do we know about the electric potential difference across the capacitor at the very beginning? <clears throat> the electric potential difference across the capacitor at the beginning. Zach? It's not at its maximum at the very beginning. Look. It's going to be zero at the very beginning. There's zero charge on it, so it's going to have zero electric potential difference. What do we know about the electric potential difference across the resistor at the very beginning? Nidish. At the beginning. At the very beginning. Right at time t equals zero, or you know, that much time. Oh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's at its maximum. How do you know that? Because um, when you draw your blue. You actually, we, 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 you, could, you need to use what we've just talked about. We, All right, well. Since you know that the potential difference across the capacitor is zero, it would lose zero at the across the Sure, if we, if we talk about it that way, sure. You know the electric potential difference across the capacitor is equal to zero, therefore the only thing left is the resistor. So it's going to have the same electric potential difference as the battery, and therefore as a function of time, it's going to go down, and it's going to, so it's going to be great. Let's go walk through, um, our goal is to figure out charge and current as a function of time. Where do we start, Tyler? Okay, just so you know, I'm hoping you won't write I don't know on your paper. As some of you did on the, the, my final, I've been grading them, I had a couple people write I don't know. Really, you're just wasting time. <laughs> please, please don't. We are going to draw a loop. Sure, here's our loop. What, Tyler, is the electric potential difference around a loop? Zero. Tyler, go all the way around the loop for me, please. Okay, plus E minus the delta B on the capacitor, which is zero over C. And minus the um, potential difference from the resistor, which is I um, R. So we have our equation. Our goal now is to figure out the current and charge is a function of time. Miller, what do we do next? Um, we know that at um, t equals zero, the charge is zero. I agree with that. Um, so you can 
in the equation you said you can make that q equal zero, so it's just... Okay, what you're talking about through there is figuring out like the current at the beginning and things like that. I'm talking about figuring out the current as a function of time and the charge as a function of time. You're talking about the limits. We've already talked about the limits. I want to know what are we going to do to this equation to solve it for the first the charge as a function of time. Uh, right. um, so, Okay, so current times resistance is equal to the EMF minus charge divided by capacitance. And then want to divide everything by the resistance. Okay, so we get current is equal to the EMF divided by the resistance minus charge divided by RC, the resistance times the capacitance. What is the definition of current, please? Uh, Michael Lowe, the equation definition of current. <laughs> That's um, doing it in terms of electric potential of resistance. We're talking about the more basic equation for the current. Travis? Not what I was looking for, but yes. One seventh of a fortnight. over dt is equal to the EMF divided by the resistance minus Q over RC, right? we have the current is equal to the derivative of charge as a function of time. Our goal now is to put dq on one side and dt on the other side and go through and solve this. So now, one, the only odd step I would consider in this whole thing is this step right here, where we multiply through uh, to make this negative one over rc on this side, so we have capacitance over capacitance because we can simply multiply through by one. So we, this is then equal to the charge minus the uh, EMF times the capacitance. Okay. At this time, we're going to have dq over here. Uh, actually, let's take 1 over q minus ec uh, is equal to oh, times dq. Uh, times dq, just dividing both sides by q over uh, negative ec. And bringing the dt over to the other side, we get negative 1 over rc times d. We can now take the integral of both sides. We have the integral of both sides. What are the limits on these two integrals, please? Uh, John. Um, um, for dq, it's, it's that's at uh, zero and goes to infinity. Or it goes to q, big, big q. Goes to little q, because we're trying to find the charge as a function of time. So this actually is what we're solving for, right? It goes yeah. to little q. And then t goes to zero to uh, t. <laughs> I love the little whispers. Those are always fun. <laughs> so remember, we're trying to find charge as a function of time, right? So this is the charge. This is the time that it's a function of. So we now have, uh, on the left-hand side, we'll have the natural log of q minus e c uh, all from zero to big Q is equal to just 1 over RC times T. Um, on the left hand side, natural log of Q minus EC minus the natural log of 0 minus EC equals negative 1 over RC times T. <laughs> Let's see. Um, on the left hand side, natural log of Q minus EC divided by negative EC is equal to negative 1 over RC times T. Next step, uh, look. Put E to the power. Put E to the power on both sides, and that gets rid of the natural log, so we get. Q minus EC divided by negative EC is equal to E to the negative 1 over RC times T. Q minus EC is equal to negative EC times E to the negative 1 over RC times T. The charge as a function of time is equal to EC times the quantity 1 minus E to the negative 1 over RC times T. What is the symbol for the time constant? Eugene. Tau. 
how. For an RC circuit, what is the time constant? Zach? R, C. What are the dimensions for the time constant doorstep? Seconds. What is the time constant? Take it. Mm -hmm. Number, or it's the time when it's like six, two, three, or something. Which is close exactly to, what you said last time. It's yeah, just, it's close to that. It's, it's, six, three, two. it's, it's the reverse. Six, 63.2 percent. You got the in the wrong order. <laughs> it is the time it takes for a change of 63.2 percent. In this particular case, would be the charge change in charge by 63.2 percent. Depends. So we can now figure out the current. How are we going to figure out the current as a function of time? How do? Uh, well, it's equal to the current is equal to the derivative of charge. So we simply take the derivative of the equation right here. So the derivative uh, as a function of time of EC minus EC e to the negative 1 over RC times T is equal to, please take the derivative, Miller. Uh, Piece goes away, this derivative of constant is nothing. And then mm, uh, multiply <coughs> by one over negative RC. Do it that way. So let's see, the capacitance cancels out and we can lose a negative as well. So the current as a function of time is equal to E over R times E to the negative T over R. Great, the current as a function of time as well. Sure, if the way it works out is 63.2, can remind me where, where do we get the 63.2% from? I showed you mathematically where it comes from just so that if, in case, just for some reason you forget. Go ahead. Isn't that like value of E? Is not quite the value of e. One minus e. Remember, this has to. We'll just look at charge as a function of time, which was equal to uh, e c times one minus e to the negative one over r c times t. If we set t equal to the time constant, we get e c times one minus e to the negative. Uh, we'll say r c over r c, right? Because the time constant is just r c. So it's uh, e c times 1 minus e to the negative 1. And if you plug 1 minus e to the negative 1 in your calculator, you will get 0 0.632, etc. That's where the 63.2% comes from, which is just a useful thing to remember in case, God forbid, you can't remember the number. <laughs> 